so we are back with a cast aluminum welding fabrication project and I guess a little machining but there was this valve cover we got for our buddy Josh that I guess he needed some clearance in I don't really know but we had to machine it down a little bit I guess that I think it's for some type of Ford it said but now I just got to fill it in with a piece of aluminum and here's my piece so far I found a scrap piece that was a little short piece like that and now I got to make a little template up and I'll show you what I did. Just cut this little piece out to a straight edge like that. And then just kind of put it over where I need it to. And then I'm going to take a pencil and I'll trace over it back and forth. Being that like if you took your piece of metal and you can't really get underneath it to trace it. So I took a piece like this. Kind of eyeballed it where I wanted it. And I should move it over an eighth of an inch extra because I got that. But let's see, you put it where you want it about and just take your pencil and just start tracing back and forth. But something like that, and it gives you a little template you could kind of mark out. And then with this, they don't want to cover up this circle with the weld. So I can't really put the piece of metal out to the edge. So I kind of want to put it right on the inside, like right here, if I can. And I already made my little template which I thought about my angle afterwards, that piece going up. So I might have to modify or cut this one a little bit more, but this one would have been a better one because I thought just to cut an eighth inch off this side right here and it would just shift it over, but that messes with my angle, which I should have spaced this out an eighth of an inch for this metal going up like that to begin with, which this would have been the correct one, but this will get me pretty close or I can cut this out and trace it on there and round that out a little bit more. So that's your little thing and start cutting it out. A little hard to see with the uh, pencil marks. I just took a marker and went back over it and I'll cut that out. There you have that. And this was a bigger piece and I just brought it over so it'd be like that. I'll just put a new little piece, my new trace line on it, and that should work like that. See if I could get you in a little close, but it'll essentially be like that. And then that piece coming up right over there, and I'll fill in those sides right to the right. But I think that'll work pretty good because I could put the weld right onto there. And it's okay to have a little gap in there like that in there. That makes sense. So now I'm just going to put this back on, trace it, and we'll cut it out a little bit more. If I had a vertical or a stand-up like uh, bandsaw, that would be perfect, but we don't. So my notcher and a grinder is my next best thing. pretty close and that's just what I did before this I'll just save the thing and I'll trace I could trace around the outside on that so now we'll take it over there and I don't know if I said it but today is July 3rd 2025 not sunny it's rainy today Dunedin Florida and we are about 85 ish degrees so not as hot a little humid from the rain but tomorrow's 4th of July so happy 4th of July everybody probably be late 4th of July but here you go, you're on a tripod, that's why it's a little crooked. But, might actually be able to do this with a carbide bird too, so we'll see. I'll show you what I got. I got most of it already done, so got that, and then this little bit to do. So, I got either flap disc or a carbide bird, should work pretty good, and we'll see. Make sure you put your safety equipment on, I like a long sleeve shirt just so I don't get it all over me. And there we go. And that actually worked really good. That new, here's my new uh, die grinder, the 91. That's the Gen 2. That one's a beast compared to the old one. Want to do a video on that, on the comparison, and definitely worth it, I think, so far. This is why I like to wear the long sleeve shirt, because I got it all over me, and I don't have it all on my skin now. Especially if you're sweating in the hot summer and that sticks to you, that's no fun, all those little sharp, pringly things. And moment of truth. 
All right, I think I got to round that corner a little bit right here. And I can bring it this way a little bit, but we're pretty close. I think that should work. Even if there's a little gap, which there is on this side, but I should be able to bring it that way a little. That should be fine. And then, so I'll just notch that little corner out and go from there. And how does it fit? Not too shabby, bring it up against that way. And that'll be pretty good. That's not that big of a gap to fill in either as that. And I'd like it to go this way a hair. Yeah, because I'd rather fill in that little gap right there, all this. So that way I'm not interfering with that. And that should be pretty good, I think. So now I'll just trace around this and that should be good. Just like that. Just got to cut that out and I'll be right back. It's going to be a little difficult because I can't put it in the shear like that. Would have been easier, but that's all right. We'll figure something out. But like that with the notcher, now I'll just grind the rest for carbide burr and I'll be right back. All right, let's see. Not too shabby, guys. I'll show you one thing, though. The thing I would like to do is maybe grind this down a little bit more. That way it's not sitting flush up with that so I could have that little extra half on, half off weld. I'm going to grind this little tab down to meet that straight. And that should be pretty good. Give me a nice little weld there. Same thing on the back like that. And I think that should be good. And one other thing too, this looks like it's like powder coat or something on top. So I'm going to have to grind all this down too before I weld it. So I'm going to try sticking it in the sandblaster if I can. And we'll go from there. But I'll do that off camera this little thing and it should be good after that all right and my phone is almost dead i think that was definitely powder coat i tried the sandblaster but that's gerald's he got like really fine abrasives in there so it doesn't penetrate good through here i got a little bit off but not enough so i had to go back with the grinder and some other tools here's our fit up and i think that came out pretty good fit up like that get a nice bead around it all the way around it and we could blend it down afterwards phone's down to three percent battery life so i'm gonna have to hook an extension cord up but i get the welder ready drug up here plug the phone in we could start welding it and here's my this is one thing i always mention though dirty long sleeve shirt clean one for welding so just nice welder fired up gas on i'm gonna set that about 20 cfh then for my number two, I just go over to my number two setting, and that's AC, my normal AC setup, 250 amps, I'll keep it at 125 hertz. We could bring this down to about 33 balance, 33% positive, and amps 10, 13, I'll bump it up to like 15 for the post flow, pre flow 0.3, start amps 40, and I might actually bump my frequency up a lot. I'll just bump it to 250, give it a nice fine. Actually, I'll do 150. How's that? There we go. I always like the frequency. The lower the frequency, like 60 hertz, will make a nice fat weld. The more you bump it up, like 250, it'll make it skinnier. And one thing, too, is you want to make sure you grind, being that that's powder coat, and the bottom wasn't, um, it was still powder coat on the bottom. I ground a little spot on the top. I don't like to ground through my good clamps or like ground put a ground to my good clamp but i did anyway because all that force goes in there and or all that heat goes in there and wears it out and makes the things really hard to open over time but we'll sacrifice it for this one got that piece in and we're good to go hopefully get some tacks on it four tacks one in each corner and this will give us time to see how it's tacking with that cast aluminum seems to be going pretty all good. right guys i think just like that it should be pretty good got to tack down at a bunch of spots same thing with the back we'll fill it up we'll fill that little gap up right there grind that down afterwards it should look pretty nice and smooth i might use 16th inch wire going around there just to keep it nice and small so it's not in the way and i like to use 332nd though sometimes too but what wire I'm using right now is 4043 instead of uh, 5356 because 5356 wire, it doesn't handle heat as much. I think you should only go up to a couple hundred degrees, which I'm not sure what this is going to, but I'd rather just use the 4043 for high heat part. So 
that's just my little thing I learned. And I'm not sure how good of arc shot you'll get. I'm just gonna keep the camera rolling while I weld it and hopefully it turns out okay. Remember, I got my extension cord contraption going up to charging a phone for you guys. Not too much to it. This one is actually welding pretty decently, which is good for cast aluminum. Um, it was kind of a pain to take that coating off, but we got most of it off in our direction and just slow and steady. Same thing as always, slow and steady wins the race. Just go slow, make sure it heats up pretty good. Get that heat in there, work that in there and just keep going at it. Don't let it get too hot, but make sure it's warm enough and should be good. Um, Sorry, I didn't get a couple different angle shots on this. I guess I had it plugged in on that extension cord, so maybe I didn't want to move it around too much. I forget, but this was kind of just a throw-in video that a little job for the last minute of the day or whatever, and I just recorded it, but um, not much to it. Pretty easy-ish, if you want to call it. Just welding it, and then we'll grind it down after. And I'm still trying to get better arc shots for you guys, close-ups and everything. So that's something I'm going to be working on in the future. So stay tuned for that. All right. And that right there, my friends, is done. <clears throat> um, I can go over and grind it. Sometimes I like to do that just because I'll know if there's any pit holes or anything, which there shouldn't be. But if there is, I could go back over it. But really, it doesn't need to be. That thing, whatever goes in there, should uh, it's probably a spark plug or something. I don't know. That goes on top up there. So it should be pretty good. Be able to grind that down nice and smooth. It should blend off really nice, actually. But there you go. Welded a little dirty, especially when I got up to the areas next to that paint and stuff. You can see some black marks. I brushed it off. But that's it. Not too bad. One last thing before you finish. Clean up your mess. That's the good thing to do i'm gonna clean up all over here take this thing blow all the dust off because that's what keeps it lasting longer if you do and sweep up your mess they left this thing a huge mess on me the other day which is not really cool take care of your stuff it'll take care of you and it's nice to have nice stuff so tip of the day and there you go everything is put back cleaned up cleaned off swept up everything's nice and neat what else can you ask for? It's just nice to have a nice work environment. Everybody would enjoy it and appreciate it. So cleaned off, swept up, everything's put back. Just nice and neat. I gotta put my sign back in the middle of the table just so hopefully people respect it. Here you go, here's your finished product. I did grind it down the best I could with the tools that I had. I don't got the best burrs and stuff to get inside the corners, but I don't see any holes or anything, but that's pretty good. Can of paint on there, blend it in pretty good, look pretty good, but that's it. What can you ask for? Sometimes like that's that took an extra 10, 15 minutes, just say 10 minutes. So if you are charging for that or whatever, just make sure to ask them, say, hey, you want me to clean up the welds or whatever? Might have to charge for that. So depends on what job you're doing and stuff, but. There's your inside. Inside shouldn't really matter, but that's that. I washed it down too, just to get all that dust off and everything. And it does have a little rock in it. I don't know. I think it always had a little rock in it. I doubt it bowed from that, but that's it. What do you guys think? Let me know how you like it. If you would have done anything differently, I'm not professional. I try to be, but I'm not. But that's it. Anyway, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, watch the ads because I get paid for those. And anything else, leave in the comments. Chris Winarski, over and out.